So North Korea has to actually increase um, regular exports to China, uh, although some of that's probably just bounced back from COVID. Uh, it also means, I think, effectively that North Korea has massively increased its exports to Russia uh, over the past year, especially of weapons, which were, lest you forget, banned by sanctions <laughs> and has gotten something in exchange from Russia uh, in terms of trade. What that is, no one really knows. It may be a combination of hard currency, oil, uh, and, and sort of te technological assistance with its satellite program, with missile program, or with even with this nuclear program, which are also, again, sanctions, right? So in some sense, it's not that sanctions are no longer even being enforced. It's they're being blatantly ignored and violated, especially by Russia. And there have been thousands and thousands of rail uh, containers that have left North Korea. Uh, and sort of given the size, given the number that have left, um, we're talking hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of, of artillery shells. Uh, and certainly given that they have found um, North Korean missiles in Ukraine that have been launched. Obviously, North Korea was also sending ballistic missiles to, to Russia as well. You know, it's not necessarily the majority of what Russia is using, but it's a substantial amount. Uh, and it's certainly enough to sort of keep Russia going for another while, um, whereas, you know, it might have run out earlier or it might have sort of had to decrease its usage of its own supplies if North Korea had not provided them. And aside from helping North Korea build, you know, the very first reactor, you know, Soviet Union and then China um, have never really been directly interested in directly helping the um, the North Korean nuclear weapons program. In fact, North Korea started pushing for its own nuclear weapon, partly because Russia and China pulled out of, of aiding them in the 1980s, right? Um, and, and I think sort of what this says is that, you know, the, the specific nuclear weapons designs, uh, the sort of the, the, you know, the sort of modernization of that are probably not things that Russia would help North Korea with. But certainly the missiles on which those, those you know, those bombs are, are located. Um, the ability to sort of put them in submarines, uh, which has long been a capability sought by North Korea, um, and the ability to sort of launch them farther uh, and more accurately, I think would be um, in some sense what North Korea would be interested in. And that kind of assistance couched in the, you know, in the, in the context of Russia giving North Korean aid for its, uh, you know, satellite program uh, would be something that North Korea might be interested in. You know, one of the interesting things about North Korea is that they, they were one of the few countries that didn't hide their support of Russia, right? For, for North Korea, this was a essentially a godsend, right? This is a, ma a golden opportunity that just fell into their laps strategically, right? Uh, so they're one of the few countries that actually sort of congratulated Russia on invading Ukraine, right? Um, and I think that's been, in some sense, the, the um, you know, North Korea's role and what North Korea sees as an advantage. It can support Russia wholeheartedly in this. Obviously, sort of whether Russia or, you know, whether Ukraine's invaded clear by Russia or not is not necessarily something that North Korea really cares about, but it allows them to sell lots of weapons to, to Russia. It allows Russia to play interference or gives Russia incentives to play interference for North Korea on sanctions, which it did, right, um, you know, sort of in March of this year. Uh, so in some sense, North Korea has dramatically opened up its, its sort of strategic political space, what you want to call it, because of the support of Russia and Ukraine. Uh, and it's also made a lot of money out of it. You know, it's, um, you know, it's sort of decreased the influence that China has over it because it now has a partner in Russia. Um, and uh, in some sense, it is, it's able to see its weapons being tested, right? I mean, now North Korean weapons have now been used more in, in Ukraine since they have been, you know, in total since 1953, right? And, and that gives it a lot of testing, of, you know, testing ability that didn't have before in sort of real world combat conditions. So, you know, basically everything is coming up, you know, positive for North Korea. This is a no-lose situation for it when it comes to participation in Ukraine.